it's been hard to be a person losing their mobility, you know? My self-esteem took a hit at first. It was really hard to feel sexy. So I told my husband, why don't we do something to make the scooter like a sexy thing? Right, so we had sex on the scooter, okay? And I'm gonna show you how right now. <laughs> Now, he, he just sat here like this, like you would, and then I sat down on his lap. Now, he's not a very big man, but he's obviously very brave. He's brave. <laughs> and we had a blast. We had this thing going like 30 miles an hour. It wasn't even on, you know? But the problem is we're bouncing up and down, so my titties are bouncing up and down, and they keep landing on the horn. So the whole time we're doing it, it sounds like. <laughs> now I get oddly aroused every Monday morning when the garbage man backs up. <laughs> he starts backing up, I start backing it up, you know? <laughs> but I have learned, like, you can't sit on this thing naked for too long, because after a while you start to stick. And once you peel yourself off for like two days, you got a bad case of scooter cooter. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. Uh, I just retired from my job 25 years in a public high school. Um, yeah, that was cool. You know, people say high school kids are terrible, but I, I kind of miss them, you know? If, if, a, if a teenager likes you and they trust you, they will tell you anything. I had a, a kid tell me, um, when you're wrestling, if you get a boner, you have 30 seconds to get rid of it, otherwise you're disqualified. <laughs> I don't know anything about wrestling, so I don't know if that's true. And, and like, if it's true, is it a general wrestling rule or do we have some kind of boner incident? <laughs> I, I was gonna look it up, but then I thought, oh, wait a minute, I work at a high school. Probably shouldn't have high school wrestling boners in my search history. <laughs> But kids are different nowadays than they were when I went to school, because now boys moisturize. They, went, they never did that back when I was in school. I had a student come up to me and he's doing this, and he said, I got too much, do you want some? So, so I said, okay, I took it, I started rubbing it in, and then I thought, oh, wait a minute, I hope this is lotion. <laughs> I wore my boobs right up and out front for y'all tonight. You're welcome. Since we're in Vegas, it is still boob sweat season. And you have to air them out, you do. Otherwise you can get a gnarly case of humiditities. Uh, last, time was, uh, last time I was here, it was, you know, in the hundreds. I could have steamed veggies in there. Like if you dropped a kernel in, I could pop corn. I could start my own food delivery service, call it Boober Eats. <laughs> or, or maybe Uber Teats, I don't know. <laughs> but the thing about having big boobs is that when you're eating, if you drop anything, it lands right in there. And the next thing you know, my husband's saying, why is there taco meat all over the bathroom floor? Because I took my bra off in there, that's why. <laughs> so now we just keep the tortillas in the bathroom. <laughs> The meat's already heated up, the cheese is melted, they're delicious. I, I, I hear the groaning, I hear it. But you know what? If I brought this taco truck over at 2 a.m., there's at least two people in this room that would place an order. <laughs> Motorboat them some tacos. I was watching Family Feud the other day. The question was, how old is a woman when no one wants to see her cleavage anymore? The number one answer was 50. Now, I'm a 63-year-old woman, so that was hurtful. So first of all, Steve Harvey can suck it. But secondly, it's up to me when I'm gonna put these puppies away. I'm not gonna let society or family feud tell me what to do with my body. I figure as long as there's one chubby chaser or one Mexican busboy that wants to see him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prop him up and stick him out. And I, and I do want to clarify, I don't mean that like in a racist way, but come with me to a Mexican restaurant sometime. Just see how fast I get my chips and salsa. <laughs> yeah. 
couple years ago, the big thing that was like all the open mic guy comics, they were talking about women having squirting orgasms. And I was like, I, I don't think so. I think that's pee. And they were like, no, let me, let me come over and I'll show you. You know, I'll, I'll, we'll show you. So then I'm like, okay, let me talk to one of my girlfriends. And she was like, oh yeah, I do that. You don't do that? She said, maybe, you, maybe something's wrong. Maybe you should go get that checked. And I was like, well, that's rude, you know? I'm like, what's the matter with my vagina? Have I broken it? Because <laughs> apparently everybody else is having these advanced orgasms over here. <laughs> And I'm just sitting here with my old tattered pussy. <laughs> my old tattered velveteen rabbit pussy. <laughs> Maybe if somebody loves it just right, it'll turn into a real pussy. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't get it, because I've been doing kegels for 46 years. <laughs> there is nothing going in or coming out that I'm not completely in charge of. In fact, back when I was younger, my nickname was The Grip. The I don't know what that says about me that my vagina has a nickname worthy of a WWE wrestler. I always pictured the grip as a little pink superhero. She's wearing a cape with a hood and a little tuft of fur. And her superpower is the ability to squeeze cylindrical objects until you just hand her your credit card. So anyway, then the National Institute of Health came back and said, oh, oops, we were wrong. It actually was pee after all. So I went to my girlfriend and I said, um, I think you might be incontinent. You better go get that checked, all right? It got quiet in here. There's some bedwetters in the room. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I got married to a wonderful man. Um, when he first met me, he'd never been with a big woman before. So he looked at me like I was a unicycle. You know, like he knew he wanted to ride it. He just wasn't quite sure how. <laughs> He's doing a lot better. Now he hardly ever falls off, so. <laughs> but he does have a bad habit of scratching himself. Like if he got murdered and they were scraping under his fingernails for evidence, they'd say his balls definitely did it. <laughs> <laughs> and balls are ridiculous. I told him that he accused me of ball shaming him. I said, why don't you have the common decency to be ashamed of those things on your own? <laughs> the men usually kind of get a little quiet right there. And we gotta, we gotta admit that never in the history of the world has anyone said, it's the third date, can't wait to find out what his balls look like. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And, and I'm not trying to body shame anybody because I get it, you know? My vagina's like an eclipse. It causes a lot of excitement, but you probably don't want to look directly at it. <laughs> and, and balls are just wrinkled, bloated sacks, just hanging around moping, waiting for someone to pet them like a pair of neglected basset hounds. <laughs> at least a penis can stand up and be proud, right? But the balls are just like two homely trolls hanging out with their hot friend thinking maybe they're gonna get some action because they just happen to be in the right place. <laughs> it's like the penis is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the balls are two little Kevin Hart's. <laughs> All right, thanks you guys. <laughs>